بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم اینڈ ویلکم بیک وی آر کنٹینیوئنگ ود آر ماڈیول ون دیٹ از فزیکل ارگنامکس اینڈ وی آر ناٹ گوئنگ ٹو ڈسکس ڈیزائن آف ہینڈ ٹولس دیز آر دا ریفرنسز دیٹ آئی کنسلٹیڈ اینڈ ٹو مٹیریل فرام ٹو میک دی سلائڈس ایٹ دا اینڈ آف دس لیکچر یو شوڈ بی ایبل ٹو انڈرسٹینڈ دا امپورٹینس آف دا فالوئنگ اسپیکٹس آف ڈیزائن آف اے ہینڈ ٹول so we will focus on the shape orientation size and weight of the hand tool a common focus of human factors and ergonomics is the interface between humans and equipment for example the controls displays and other devices that are used by workers to operate the equipment so controls are the parts of the equipment or machine that help the user a give input to the machine and displays are actually the output that is uh, displayed by the machine or or the system so examples of controls are the keyboard the mouse the touchpad and the handle of a hand tool so first we will discuss uh, how the shape of a hand tool is important so here is an example of uh, a conventional paint scraper on the left side and this is having a straight cylindrical uh, handle now if we use the the scraper then a lot of pressure will be exerted by the handle on this part of the palm so this scraper presses the ulnar artery on this soft tissue and that will of course cause pain in the long run here we have modified the handle and we have actually added this part uh, to the handle the rest of the handle is, straight, is still straight cylindrical uh, but we have added this feature so now the pressure while using the hand tool will be exerted somewhere over here at, at this point so this modified handle will uh, rest on the tough tissues between the thumb and the index finger between thumb and index finger as is shown in this figure so thus preventing pressure on the critical areas of the hand so slight modifi- modification in the shape of the handle will result in pain free um, use of this tool here is another example example of a plier so it has some uh, nice features like it has a guard so that uh, uh, the hand or the thumb does not uh, actually uh, slip toward the uh, this metallic portion of the plier similarly you you are having thumb support region so that you can uh, press the thumb here to to operate uh, or to use this plier and this angle is very important uh, to minimize the wrist deviation so this this angle is critical in the design of many uh, hand tools so this avoids the uh, deviation of the wrist similarly we are having flat sides with radius edges there should not be sharp edges and uh, there are some a uh, curve uh, uh, that follows contour of the fingers when pliers are gripped so you could see slight curve so that it could be easily gripped here is example of a chisel so again there is a guard it's an important safety element here as well uh, then again the thumb support region to provide uh, thrust force and we are having this uh, slim neck that prevents sliding of the handle and again the handle is uh, angled at this point to minimize the wrist deviation and it is very important to uh, locate the center of gravity of a tool to minimize the torque on the on the hand or arm of the user so ideally it should be at the center of the tool as is in this case and we are having rounded and uh, again sharp edges should be avoided 
So here are some important elements to uh, properly grip this uh, tool. So we can see the curves on the, on the handle, cushion grips for increasing the friction between uh, handle and the hand of the user, as well as uh, making it comfortable to grip. This space should be sufficient to prevent clenched fist. Then we are having special use reverse handle using some uh, spring, uh, using some spring for returning it back into the uh, open position after the use. And handle should be long enough to extend beyond the palm. So anthropometry should also be considered. Orientation of the handles of the tools is also important. A handle of a hand tool can be designed in different ways and there are different ways of exerting power on the, on the tool and the task. So there are two types of handles or grips. One is the pistol grip and the other is inline or cylindrical grip. The option chosen should depend on how the task is organized and what is convenient for the operator. So first we will see the cylindrical grip or inline grip. So you could see that uh, this is the body of the tool and this is the handle of the tool. And the handle, axis of the handle runs along the body of the tool. So this is cylindrical or inline grip. So some tools are designed with handles that run the same direction as the length of the tool. This design is appropriate when working at about waist height on a horizontal work surface as is shown in the figure. So work surface is horizontal and the operation is to be performed at about waist height. The second possibility is that when uh, the surface is vertical and above shoulder height. So for example, you are drilling a hole in the wall of your room. So that is a vertical surface, the wall of the room and the height is above shoulder height. So the basic idea is that you will be able to keep your wrist straight in both these situations by using the cylindrical grip. So the angle between the wrist and the forearm should be zero degree. So that is the rule of thumb. The second type of grip is pistol grip, similar to the one shown here. So the grip is uh, perpendicular to the body uh, of the tool. This design is appropriate uh, for work on a vertical surface at about waist height, up to chest height. So when the surface was horizontal and we, we had to work at waist height, the cylindrical grip was appropriate, but uh, when the surface is vertical at the waist height up to chest height, then uh, this pistol grip is appropriate. And again, it will help to keep the wrist straight. Secondly, when working on a horizontal surface at mid thigh or lower, so in that case, the pistol grip will be appropriate. So you are working on a horizontal surface and the height of the surface is uh, around your thigh height or below that. Finally, the surface is horizontal directly above your head. So if you are performing some, using some tool to, to perform some operations, say on the, uh, on the ceiling of your room, then the pistol grip will be appropriate. So here is the example of the inline or cylindrical grip, you are working at a horizontal surface at about waist height. So this first scenario. The second was above shoulder height uh, and the surface is vertical. So that is not shown here. And this is the first case uh, for the inline grip. The second one is not shown in the figure. The first case in the pistol grip was vertical surface at about chest height. So this case, we are working on a vertical surface uh, from, from waist to chest height. So at the moment at uh, about uh, uh, waist height is shown, but even 
it could be slightly above or slightly below this. Second case in the pistol grip was working on a horizontal surface at mid thigh or lower. So horizontal surface at about mid thigh or lower. So uh, these were the options. The last one here, uh, working uh, above uh, your shoulder that is uh, directly above your head actually on a horizontal surface is also not shown here. And in the rest of the figure, you could see that instead of cylindrical grip, if you use a pistol grip on a horizontal surface at about waist height, you will, ha you will have to bend your wrist similarly. You could observe the same for vertical surface at about, uh, uh, at about waist to chest height. So that will not be appropriate. So this is appropriate and this is not. And same is true if for this surface you are using an inline grip that will be difficult to use. So in summary, in summary, you can see that. So whenever you have to bend your, uh, your forearm or hand, uh, that is a bad posture. So the design of the handle in that case that you are using is not appropriate. So if you don't remember these examples, just remember the rule of thumb that a good handle design will help you keep your forearm and wrist in alignment when, when performing the task. So that is the basic idea. So you could observe the same in these two examples. So the basic conclusion is that it is better to bend the handle of the tool than to bend the user's wrist. So that is the basic takeaway. So bend the handle so that you can keep the wrist and forearm in alignment. If you do not actually bend the handle where required, you will have to bend uh, your wrist. But if you bend the handle like this one, you will keep your wrist straight. So that is the conclusion of our discussion so far. And here you could see another example. In figure A, the above figure, the hand close to the body would be in ulnar deviation. For example, if your right hand is holding this handle, that will be twisted, that will be bent. And the hand at the far end uh, would be in dorsiflexion, the hand with which we are holding this point to perform the operation by moving this tool uh, to and fro. So both hands, one holding this handle, the other holding this saw at this point will be, uh, will be bent. Now this is the improved design, uh, the design B. Both hands would be perfectly straight and aligned with the tool, so this is a much better design. So you will use one hand to hold the tool at this point and the other will rest here at the top of this ball handle uh, to perform the same operation and both hands will be straight. Say right hand is there and left hand is there and you are performing the operation. So both radial and ulnar deviation will be avoided. The third important aspect is the size. So we have discussed this point in great detail in our discussion on anthropometry. So I won't go into much detail, uh, but here is uh, one example. The larger the handle diameter, the bigger the torque that can be applied. So that is important from Newtonian data point of view. But people with a small hand must be able to enclose the handle with their uh, fingers. So the circumference of the tool, actually this distance between two ends of the tools, this width should be such that uh, the smaller person in the population can also hold it. So a useful rule of thumb for evaluating handle diameters is that the handle should be of such a size that it permits slight of the thumb and fingers of a worker with small hands. So such consideration should be uh, kept in mind. So as a, 
as a summary, when designing the hand tool, you have to first uh, identify the relevant uh, variables or relevant features uh, of the tool. And then you have to identify the relevant uh, variables of the users that we call the anthropometric uh, variables. And then you have to relate the two. And then you have to decide the, uh, the rule. And we discussed three rules in a relevant discussion in anthropometry, whether you are designing for the maximum size or the minimum size, or you are designing for a range. So depending upon the feature of the hand tool, you have to apply the relevant rule. So please refer to that lecture uh, if you are not clear about the application of anthropometry in the design of different tools. So if the handle is too short with respect to the user, you could see it will be very difficult to use. So it will apply a lot of pressure on these soft issues. Last factor is the weight. Power tools tend to be considerably heavier than their non-powered counterparts. A potential source of risk strain comes from the weight of the tool itself. So again, as we saw in our discussion in biomechanics that uh, weight of the body as well as weight of something that is being held by the user like load or tool also applies a torque. And in the case of hand tools, uh, there is a potential source of risk strain from the weight of the tool itself, particularly if the handle is placed at one end. If the handle is placed at one end of the tool rather than in the middle. Wrist loading can be reduced by fitting the handle at the tool's center of mass so that the tool is counterbalanced. So here is one example where the weight of the tool may work against the performance of the task. For example, torque or movement around arm joints may eventually cause muscle fatigue. So in this case, you could imagine that if you're talking about the elbow joint, then there will be a torque because of the arm weight, there will be a torque because of the uh, tool weight, and there will be a torque when this uh, tool is performing operation. And these torques have to be balanced by the biceps muscle force. So if T naught is the net torque on elbow without tool, then of course there will be a torque because of the weight of the tool. So that will add uh, to this baseline torque. So you can see very easily that greater is the weight of the tool, greater will be the torque that, uh, that is acting on the uh, elbow joint in this case. And in, in some situation, weight of tool may work for the task performance. For example, less pushing force required in using a chainsaw, electric sander, drill, hammer, et cetera. So here P0 is the net push force without tool weight. So it will reduce proportionally to the weight of the tool. So say, for example, if the weight of the tool is uh, uh, say half a kg, then this much force will be required. So this will be, this much will be the reduction in the pushing force. If weight is reduced further, for example, to um, say 50%, then this much will be the further reduction in the push force. And the remaining, this much will be the force required. So the force will keep on decreasing depending upon weight of the tool, but of course we cannot increase the weight of the tool beyond a certain limit. And I hope you could see here that uh, which type of handle is being used and whether it is the best handle design as well uh, in these. Two. These are some general consideration in the design of hand tools. Thank you.